everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday DC Today. Apologize if this is getting to you a little later than normal. Had a meeting after the market closed and delayed me putting this together. But here we are. First of all, I just want to say you likely got the announcement in your inbox bright and early this morning. We're very excited to announce. Uh, I've been holding on to this for quite some time. The opening of the Bonson Group's first office in the great state of Texas. Uh, we have uh, secured a brand new, beautiful office in Austin, Texas, the state's capital. As a matter of fact, we're just a couple buildings down from the state capital uh, on Congress Avenue and are very excited to open May 1 in Austin, Texas, and be bringing back to our firm Robert Graham, who was a private wealth advisor at the Bonson Group for many, many years and is rejoining us to launch this Texas office expansion couldn't be happier and wanted to share that news with you. Uh, more information, of course, is at our website. So let's talk markets today just quickly. The Dow is down about 37 points. It had been up, lost that, but then kind of, you know, didn't end up down that much, about 12 basis points. Uh, S&P not much uh, behind there. And then the NASDAQ was down closer to half a percent. Uh, communication services was the worst performing sector today. And energy was the top performing sector. It was up, uh, you know, close to one and a half percent, which you recall oil spiked up yesterday. We had gotten down to about $67 plus change a barrel a week ago, and we're back up to $73.50 uh, today. So in less than a week, you've had, a, you know, almost 10 percent, maybe right at 10 percent move higher in crude. Um, but the thing I want to focus on here, okay, there's two things I've already been focused on. I'm going to reiterate and then go to a third thing that I just haven't said enough about, and that's on me. One is the point about equity market volatility that we have clearly been in a very heightened period of vol since the Silicon Valley Bank collapse. And I mentioned you've had used triple point, triple digit point moves up and down almost every day. For now, 12 days, it's 11. Uh, well, I, today didn't. So, uh, you know, as of yesterday, we were at something like 11 out of 12 days. Um, and some of those days, pretty significant, 500 points down, 400 points up, you know. And yet the market was actually up 100 or 200 points in, the, in that period. High volatility in equity, which is not to be um, unexpected when you're dealing with this kind of skittishness and uncertainty with something undergirding the financial system. And then the second thing is the bond rally, which is totally accurate. I mean like the one year, two year yields dropping over 100 basis points, the 10 year dropping over 50 basis points. So really big moves higher in bond prices across the term uh, of the yield curve um, over the last you know, couple of weeks. And so it's definitely been big price gains in the bond market. But this, the third thing I want to bring up is something I don't think I've emphasized enough, and it does bring up an important point. Equity volatility, but still kind of flat. Bond market rally, all true, but unbelievably high bond market volatility. Forget the up and downs, which have mostly been ups in terms of this bond rally. Um, forget the ups and downs of equities, which have really kind of been flattish, a little bit up. The bond market volatility is highly uncommon. And the violence of this volatility, which does not suggest something negative in terms of the return over this period of time, because I just got done saying that the bond market has actually rallied significantly. But the violence of the volatility speaks to the uncertainty, the kind of chaos, the skittishness, the unexpected realities that exist right now in the financial system and in financial and capital markets at large. Let me give you a case in point. The, it's called the MOVE VIX. So the equity VIX measures um, the kind of fear index, what people are paying for options around the S&P 500. The MOVE VIX does the same around bond market level. So it's essentially a measurement of volatility in the bond market. It has been higher um, over these last couple of weeks than it was during COVID during the immediate aftermath of the whole March 2020 COVID implosion. Significantly higher. It's been higher than it was during the taper tantrum after Bernanke's famous speech in the summer of 2013. Um, you have to go back to Lehman, to 08, to have seen bond vol this high. Now that bond vol has netted to a positive and quite significantly positive total return. 
but you're seeing day by day movements of 20, 30, 35 basis points up and down in yields. That isn't, I'm not saying it is it's a good thing or a bad thing. And it's certainly if you're an investor and you don't look at your bond portfolio, don't care day by day, nobody should. And you're just holding different bonds, you know, it's irrelevant to returns and so forth. I'm not saying it for what it means to the investment reality of those bonds. I'm saying it for what it means to the signifier effect across capital markets. You just don't get this kind of enhanced volatility in a totally rationalized market environment. And we do not have a rational market environment. There's uncertainty, there's skittishness, there's questions. And the reason is uh, monetary policy. Uh, the reason is um, fears about the stability of the banking system and so forth. Things seem to be settling. Um, we, we haven't had any major dramatic announcements on the banking front since Credit Suisse. Um, we're still kind of waiting to see what's going to happen for First Republic, but I still think that has more to do with the shareholders of First Republic than anything to do with depositors. So it may be that right now the Fed, the FDIC, and Treasury is starting to feel like, okay, the efforts we took to insure uninsured depositors have worked and that the major flows out have calmed down. But bond vol, equity vol is saying, yeah, but what else lingers? And more importantly, what's the impact to credit? What's the impact to the economy of this much erosion in the deposit base? You know, we're getting close to a trillion dollars going into money market funds out of, it's not that high yet, but it's, it's six, seven hundred billion dollars of money that's flowed out of bank deposits, which are lendable assets in the banking system going into money market, which are investment assets and do not serve as a deposit base from which money can be lent against. So it's good, better yield for those investors. I think it's money good. I talk about it in the Ask David today, but um, it, it, is this going to impede lending uh, for small businesses, impede lending or refinances for automobiles, uh, excuse me, refinances for homes, new credit extension for, uh, for automobiles, things like that. I, I just think that the vol is going to continue. And I think this is the, um, the, the system that's been created right now, current monetary policy. I'll leave it there. Um, you want something more stable. You want something at a better valuation in the midst of enhanced volatility. Technology as a sector is trading at 23 and a half times forward earnings. It's averaged about 17 to 18 times. Energy is trading at 9.2 times forward earnings. It's averaged double that. So on a valuation basis, which is no timing mechanism, it doesn't help for timing. Energy can go lower, tech can go higher. All I'm saying is as an entry point, when you look at a quality level in your portfolio, valuation is a compelling story around why we have the position we have on excessive amounts of tech, especially big tech, new tech, cool tech, and why we are overweight in the energy space. Thanks for listening to, thanks for watching, and thanks for reading the DC Today. We'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.